with the new KTM 890 Adventure R. Pit year seven for KTM in MotoGP. Uh, last year, second in the team's championship. Uh, a win for the last four seasons in a row. Overall, how do you feel about KTM's involvement in MotoGP and how it's going? Uh, yeah, I would say time flies by. It's crazy that now it's already, yeah, we are going into season number seven, but I feel uh, the six years, they were, they were amazing because like just building up this project and, and bring it to that level and have now uh, already these wins in the in the pocket. Um, it, it was a it was a crazy journey, and uh, we enjoyed it a lot. And uh, but of course, yeah, now it's not not the time anymore to say we are the young the youngsters. We are new. No, we are there. We are established, and uh, of course now the pressure comes up because we also have to de deliver the results. So it's not good enough anymore just to be there and and be a cool organized team and everything. No, we need results. So uh, somehow I feel the pressure is on, but but the first six years have been uh, really, really cool and amazing, and we really enjoyed to be in this in this model GP uh, paddock. In 2023, Red Bull KTM factory racing has a promising rider lineup. Um, Brad Binder does does he seem to encapsulate some of the KTM spirit? I mean, the way he races, the way he is. Yeah, I mean he's he's a really uh, just a fantastic personality and 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 uh, and a friend of course after all these years and and i mean you had so many times uh, also talking about the new contract and it was always somehow clear we sat together to find a solution for the new contract because he wanted to stay with us and we wanted him with us um to see this whole development from this very small kid with a dream from south africa and now uh yeah, being our top factory rider in, in the MotoGP class is, is also nice as a, as a, yeah, as being so close to that guy. And he brings some super good spirit to the team because he's a fighter and uh, MotoGP is never easy for nobody. But like in these difficult moments, he is not the guy to say, ah, oh, it's, it's, everything is difficult. No, he's like, even sometimes when, when, I, when, when the team was struggling or, I was struggling and he said like, don't you worry my boss, tomorrow I'm going to fix it. So that, that, that race craft, whatever happens uh, during the weekend from him is, is definitely very special and helps, helps the team or help the team a lot by also building up something because we need riders with commitment and also the trust into us, we will fix it one day. We will deliver the best machine on that grid for our rider and uh, we feel the trust from him on, on, on that whole uh, thing and uh, yeah, we really enjoyed to have him on board. What do you think Jack Miller will bring to to the team and the project this year? Well, I think he's a, definitely a, a very special character, and uh, but also a long a long term friend for for our company. He has quite quite many friends in the group, so for him it was kind of a coming home. And uh, but of course that's not enough. Now we are talking about the top level of MotoGP and. Uh, He's, uh, I mean, he's, he's uh, definitely an outstanding rider, and I feel Brad and Jack they are somehow different, but at the end of the day, something is very similar. They are pushing very hard, and uh, I mean that's exactly what we need. Uh, and and I think Jack will bring a very, also a very positive fighting spirit into the team, and uh, but I feel, I feel somehow we are complete. These, these two boys are fitting very well together and uh, yeah, we need now, we need to, to prove that we can be uh, stable there in the front, uh, in the front region. And I, I feel that also Brad needs this kind of partner who is not giving up, who is always ready to, to push and also squeeze something out of a difficult day. Uh, because yeah, I'm repeating these difficult moments and days, everybody has it in, in, in MotoGP. And, uh, but I feel super confident with the two boys we have on board now. Pitt, with MotoGP being so tight and close, uh, how important is the test team and test program now? Yeah, that's, it was from the day number one, um, an important key for, for the success of our project to have a very strong uh, uh, test team. And uh, I mean, uh, Mika and Danny, they did a fantastic job for us. And, and that's not seen so much in the front row, but especially if, you, if uh, the latest when you turn into a 
non-concession team, you have you don't have your race guys on the bike anymore. So you need to develop a motorcycle and give it when it's too late to make big changes. You need to give it to your race guys when they can try this bike first time on a, on a racetrack. So that the test team is is a key in the whole in the whole program. And also there, I feel. Uh, we needed some time also to bring the right group of people together and, and form the team. Um, and it, of course, as it says, a team, again, there you need fantastic riders, you need a fantastic group of people, mechanics, the whole, the whole crew there. Um, they are super important and uh, there we also have, I would say, a first class uh, operation in the background. In 2023, the KTM RC16 will progress again. Um, what's your view on the development of the sport when it comes to aerodynamics, other devices, and the investment that KTM needs to make in these technologies? Well, I mean, it's no secret that we have been quite critical on, on this aerodynamic and, and, and development and ride height devices. Um, our, our honest opinion is it's, it's not good for the sport. Uh, we feel that the bikes are these engines, the chassis, the suspension. I mean, a, a MotoGP bike is such a, such a piece of art already. Of course, we can add on more, more uh, uh, high technical uh, crazy things, but um, we, need, we must be careful if we increase the costs and if it makes the show more difficult. Because of, at the end of the day, we need, need to attract uh, a huge public and uh, they want to see the riders fighting. They don't want to see the technology uh, fight in the background from the factories. So they want to have riders on track and they want to fight each other. And uh, I feel the bikes are so good now that, that everything we bring now more, you break even later, you turn faster. So, but where are you going to make the pass in the future? So turbulences around the aerodynamics and, and, and all these things uh, makes, makes it more difficult for the riders. So I feel we are coming closer to a, to a danger, danger zone. On the other side, from, from like de designing and developing a motorcycle, we are very happy with the regulation. So we are ready for the new season and uh, we made now big steps on the aerodynamic uh, development. All our ride height devices, everything is working fine. So we are good. It's, it's okay. Also, we like that challenge. And from an engineering point of view, we are excited. But I, I feel the class needs to be careful now where the future goes. But is it also a positive thing that you can bring new engineers, new ideas, uh, new alliances, like with the Red Bull KTM, yep, uh, Red, Bull, Red Bull Formula One team, in fact, to the project? Uh, those things that also increase not the motivation, but the, the interest around the MotoGP and the company. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the partnership we have with, with Red Bull anyway is... is is something very special and uh, goes back to the company that, that the first uh, racing project together was back in 2003 and uh, it's still in place and now when we saw that that of course you need to make steps on the aerodynamic development it and then you look over to Formula One and you see what the what what the boys are doing there uh, in the in the Red Bull family they are they're just setting the benchmark on a new level and uh, so yeah, now this was this was really refreshing for us to to get these people also on board and and uh, look to the motorcycle in a different way and also create some aerodynamic uh, steps which which we didn't think of. So that was a, a nice experience over the last winter. MotoGP is aiming to be more sustainable in 2024. Uh, it has set goals and targets. Um, KTM have a new partnership with Mobile One. Um, what do you think about the sustainability pit in racing and, and what do you hope to achieve? Well, I mean, we, we need to also look open to the world and then and, and, and take care of the environment. And then um, it, it's very clear. I mean, there are some solutions on the table. They are they are You need to grab them. And then um, we looked into a MotoGP bike today. You, you're going to be surprised, but 92% uh, of the bike uh, can be recycled because it's like it's from steel, it's from aluminium, it's it's like really good raw material which you don't need to destroy at the end of the life cycle. So all this material, how we build up the bike, will go back into the process uh, and and used again for for new machinery, tools, or or anything else. And uh, then you can fire up a MotoGP machine with with uh, yeah right 
350 kilometers an hour and then you're going to put 20 liters of uh, CO2 neutral sustainable fuel into the bike. So I, I think that's fantastic. At the end of the day, an event is always many people moving, traveling, and there is, uh, but the whole world is, I hope we all want to move still and, and enjoy living and go to events. But our so much loved show MotoGP uh, can, be, can be done in a very, very efficient way. And uh, I think now it was also our job in, with all our engineers and, uh, and the dyno facilities we have to develop together with the fuel industry this sustainable fuel. And we are, we, we made an amazing uh, work in the last years. The bikes are ready to put this fuel in without changing the technology. So you can take any bike, you can now take a 15 year old bike somewhere in, 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 I don't know, in South America and you put that fuel in and the bike will go. But the fuel is CO2 neutral. And the bike is a big piece of, 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 uh, of recyclable uh, materials. So I feel we are, we are, we are influencing this uh, future quite quite well, and we use also the the smart brain of many many engineers in the MotoGP class to to develop into that direction. So of course it's not just us; it's the whole paddock helping together, thinking together. And in the MSMA, we had some really uh, good discussions about that. This year, Pitt, uh, there's going to be 21 races, um, more action, and more exposure, new audiences perhaps, and sprint races as well. Uh, what's your view on that? I feel we need to try now. Uh, I mean, it's clear that the pressure for the whole paddock gets more on Saturday because once the mechanics, they, they, they go to the grid and the bike is showing up at the grid, it's race time. So that Saturday will be an exciting show. And um, we know that it will be a bit more difficult for the team and everybody needs to be ready. Also material wise, you cannot compromise any part on the bike which you would maybe still used for another practice session, but you cannot use it for a race. So um, I think the bike need, needs a little different treatment. The whole weekend program will change. But at the end of the day, um, we're going to have a super attractive uh, MotoGP race on Saturday for, for, for all the spectators on track, on TV. And of course, also for us, we enjoy to see races. And, uh, but I think also still nobody has a clear answer what it will bring for everybody. So I would say let's just... Uh, Go for it now. Lastly, Pitt, Red Bull Ring. It's a home GP and, you know, from being a racer yourself and how you can feed off the energy of a home race, what's it like for you there? I mean, is it like being in the eye of the storm or is it actually, can it actually be enjoyable because you see the big build up around the team, and around the company? What, what is that Grand Prix like for you? Both. We enjoy the storm there. <laughs> but uh, it's somehow, uh, uh, it's definitely a highlight of the season. First of all, it's the home GP. We bring so many people from the company. So we have basically all our friends and, and employees with us on the racetrack. Uh, same thing from the Red Bull side. So, so everything we are uh, in, in, in racing feels like is there. And then, of course, on the home GP, you want to, to bring a result. And uh, yeah, when you when you watch by the whole company live, because they all watch us on TV the whole year, but then we are there together. With, with the home, uh, home crowd, the spectators, it's a very special event. It's, it's, but also, I mean, uh, they deserved also to be, to be the organizer of the year. I think it's uh, definitely one of the nicest GPs also every year. Having this in our home country, it's, it's fantastic. And every year we look forward to, to uh, Spielberg. Since we have our whole, whole board of directors with us, <laughs> Many decisions have been taken during the last years on that race, so it's a special race and we are always excited to go there.